Welcome back, Fiber Friends, to yet another episode of the Wool to Gold podcast. If you're new here, this is a podcast about all things spinning, all things yarn and wool related. We do a lot of things on here, okay? I don't limit myself to anything. We're, we're a crafty podcast, okay? If you want to learn how to do something new, if you want to learn something new about yarn and wool, you're in the right place. And today we're going to be talking about fleece. More specifically, we're going to be talking about fleece shrinkage, okay? Shrinkage, it's real. It's a thing, okay? When you wash a fleece, you are inevitably going to lose some of the fleece weight. So very recently, I bought nearly 14 pounds of wool, okay? But I did some experiments for you guys. I did some wool math for you guys, and I figured out exactly how much weight we should expect to lose from each of the fleeces, and a rough estimate as to how much wool we actually have on our hands to work with for the next six months. A brief recap on the fleeces that we invited into the stash this year. If you haven't seen the video, the like longer video about these fleeces, which I will link below in the description if you want to go watch that. Um, but essentially, we got a wide variety of fleeces this year, and so we got to conduct this really neat experiment, okay? So we have our Shropshire Down, our down type fleece. We have a Teeswater fleece, okay, super long staple length here, classic long wool. Um, and then we also got two different Rommeldale fleeces, okay? We have nicknamed them little red and big blue not based on the staple length but based on the weight of the fleeces okay this one is three pounds and this one is four pounds because Rommeldales are fine wools generally speaking they are going to be the most like lanolin heavy or oiliest fleece greasiest fleece, whatever terminology you want to use to describe a fine wool fleece, fine wools generally lose a lot more weight in their washing, sometimes up to 50%. Now, a lot of the data that I have seen data, a lot of the information that I've seen online and on YouTube specifically about like comparing washing wool weights, a lot of them are using merino as their fine wool example, and that's totally well and fine for other people. Uh, but around these parts, we use mostly rare wools, and I kind of wanted to do my own experiments to see if like, theoretically, if CVM or Rommeldale wool, which is like one of my favorite rare fine wools or like endangered heritage breed, conservation breed, whatever you want to call it, that type of sheep. I love, love, love CVM and Rommeldales. Um, Rommeldales are essentially like, that's like the white version as opposed to the natural color. So like things like Moritz and browns and lavenders and, and grays and silvers and things like that. Uh, but this year we got some classic Rommeldale and I wanted to see if it was as greasy as something like this Teeswater fleece that I got or this Shropshire Down. And so what I did is I took four ounces of each of these dirty, okay? And my hypothesis was that the Rommeldale was going to lose the most weight when washing because it was going to be the oiliest fleece. When I look at these two fleeces, to me at least, they look to be some of the like dirtiest or greasiest fleeces, especially in my hands. So I expected these to lose the most weight. My guess was like 40%. I was really hoping it wasn't going to be as much as 50%. So I'd really had my fingers crossed with that one. Um, next up, we had the Shropshire Down and the Teeswater. I'll be honest, I really did think that the Shropshire Down was going to lose the least amount of weight. Uh, and that the Teeswater, despite being a rinsed fleece, I've never gotten a rinsed fleece before. Um, I'm pretty sure this came from a show sheep. I, I think that's why it was probably rinsed so that it could be, you know, in its best, most pristine form before a show. Uh, but I had never gotten a rinse fleece before, and I didn't really know how that was going to impact my results, but my knowledge of washing long wools, like, uh, Lincoln long wools or Wensleydales in the past was that it was going to be fairly greasy, fairly oily, and I was going to lose a fair amount of weight when I washed it. But I'm about to show you guys the clean samples of most of these fleeces. I actually don't have a completely dried sample of Little Red yet, but I have a clean, washed, dry and weighed samples of the rest of them, so I kind of wanted to show you guys my findings. So these are the clean sample bags, all right? We have the CVM slash Rommeldale down here. Up here, we have the Shropshire down, and then I also put down below the Tees water sample. Before I reveal which one lost the least amount of weight, which one lost the most amount of weight, put your guesses down below. I really want to know. So I'm going to give you guys a second gonna give you guys a moment to make your decisions, okay? And then I'm gonna blow your minds and say, or at least I was really surprised by this finding, the Teeswater lost the least amount of weight, okay? 
Again, all of these samples started at four ounces. So once the teas water was completely washed and dried, it finally weighed in at 3.7 ounces. That means that essentially I lost 7% of the weight of the fleece in the like washing and scouring process, which I was very happily surprised by mostly because per pound, the teas water was definitely the most expensive thing that I bought. And so I'm happy that I'm not losing an incredible amount of it while I'm washing it. Next up, with only 28% of its weight loss during washing, we have the Rommeldale. Okay, this was a big surprise for me. I was really not expecting this to be the case. Once everything was said and done, it did weigh in at 2.9 ounces once it was completely cleaned. Um, and yeah, that amounts to a 28% loss in lanolin and dirt, which again, I really wasn't expecting for this big blue fleece because A, at least visually to me, it looks really dirty and I don't know, I just... I, I don't know. I just kind of expected it to, to be greasier, I guess, but that did not end up being the case. Um, but not very far behind it was the Shropshire Down, I will admit. So the Shropshire Down, I did wash first before the Rommeldale. So after that had been washed, I was like, mm, I'm expecting the Rommeldale to maybe lose like 35% weight, maybe 40%. Um, but the Shropshire ended up weighing in at 2.8 ounces. So really right behind that Rommeldale. Um, so approximately 30% of the weight was lost while washing. Okay, so why is this information important? Why is it relevant? Why did I do this experiment in the first place? So first things first, this experiment allows me to accurately predict how much wool I actually purchased at Maryland Sheep and Wool as opposed to using the quote-unquote dirty weight. Okay, the dirty weight can be, as I mentioned before, very misleading depending on what breed you're buying and how much wool you're actually buying, all of that fun stuff. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things, this is what this means for me. Big Blue is actually going to yield me about 2.9 pounds of like workable wool, okay? So the wool shrinkage, the wool loss on that is about 1.1 pounds. Um, for the Shropshire, I'm going to end up with about 3.15 pounds, 3.1, let's call it, pounds of workable wool after everything is washed reminding you that we're starting with like a weight of 4.5, right? That can sound really intimidating, but I feel like at least personally, like that brings it down a lot. Losing 1.3 pounds, 1.4 pounds of that wool weight post washing just makes a lot of projects seem a lot more manageable to me. Maybe that doesn't apply to you, but for me, it can make things seem a lot easier to tackle, right? Really scary and intimidating projects at least become a little bit more manageable, okay? Every, every pound of wool counts. <laughs> and then again, my favorite finding from this study is that my 2.5 pounds of teas water is probably going to yield 2.3 or 2.2 worst case scenario pounds of usable teas water locks that I'm going to be able to dye up for you guys. Guys, I can't wait to dye up this teas water. I'm really thinking about trying to do it as soon as possible because I want to dye a bunch of different natural colors on the teas water and I just know it's going to take the colors really well because the luster is insane on this fiber. Um, and I've been really into luster lately. I've been spinning up some border luster in my free time, the one that I got from the wool garden. And I forgot that border luster is like nature's Stellina. It's like naturally sparkly. And I feel like if you haven't spun like true blue, like purebred border luster before you are going to think that that sounds crazy and really dramatic but if you've spun it before you know exactly what i mean those those guys sparkle they have beautiful fleeces um but all this information is important and relevant because it can also help you predict how much wool you should be buying when you go to a wool festival right some years we might underbuy and some years we might overbuy maybe that kind of thing doesn't matter to you maybe stash management isn't something that's super relevant to you right now um but personally i really like to share my stash management tips and how i tackle stash management as an artist and this is one of the ways that i don't know again it makes things easier to tackle in my mind right like especially when you start getting into buying like eight to ten pound fleeces because the opportunity will arise and i promise you will be tempted because the prices are always very good on things like that 
um, and sometimes you can, uh, you can really convince yourself that that's a much more manageable project once you realize that you might be losing a lot of that weight once you actually wash the fleece. Mind you, that's still like 10 pounds of fleece to wash, um, and fleece washing is, you know, it's a, it's a taxing and time-consuming type of task, and so before you commit yourself to like a really big fleece, I do recommend practicing with smaller fleeces that are at like a more affordable cost. I find knowing about wool shrinkage also really important if you are like planning an entire project around a fleece, okay? So let's say you buy like a merino lamb fleece, something that is smaller than your usual merino fleece, post washing, you just, you have to be careful with exactly how much wool you're left with and how much wool you actually need for a sweater, right? Because once you, once you start spinning and also before you even start spinning, there are general ways of predicting how much yarn you can get from like a certain amount of wool. I mean this in a very rough sense okay because once you start spinning like grist is a really complicated thing in spinning and it can ooh, your grist can really impact how much wool you need to accomplish a certain amount of yardage um but in general you can use like store-bought yarn in the same weight to roughly guide you on how much how much raw fiber you will need. Keep in mind that again, you're gonna lose weight during the washing. You might need to skirt a fleece that you get. Um, In the more recent years that I've been buying fleeces, I've noticed that shepherds and shepherdesses have gotten a lot better at skirting fleeces, but sometimes you still have to remove some wool that's just like super gross from the fleece. And mind you, that wool is also usually really heavy because it's soaked in gross stuff, right? Okay. So keep that in mind. You might be losing some of that weight. And then during the processing, especially if you're hand processing, like hand carding or hand combing, you're probably also going to lose a little bit of wool in the processing as well. Okay. So if you're already working with a tight amount of wool, if you're like, I need at least a pound and a half of wool for this sweater and post washing, post doing all the math, you're looking at like 1.8 pounds of wool. Maybe, maybe get a bigger fleece. Maybe, maybe get two fleeces, right? Okay, just think about those things. Use this knowledge to better inform your fleece buying and your project planning decisions in the future. Um, thank you so much for watching this Little Video Fiber Friends. I'm going to get back to you guys on how the weigh-in for Little Red ends up turning out. If it ends up losing more weight or less weight, I am guessing it's going to lose more weight than Big Blue because I just, I'm just surprised that these fleeces are not greasier, but maybe I should just like accept the blessing because they've honestly, honestly been a lot easier to wash than the last CVM fleece that I had. However, the last CVM fleece that I had was, was admittedly a, like even finer than these fleeces are and these fleeces are pretty fine. Like that was truly a fine wool fleece and it was super duper oily. Um, but it was beautiful. It was super fun to work with. I know some of you guys got the opportunity to work with it. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for now. Um, I do promise, as you can probably see in the background, I finally have this gradient yarn drying, which means the gradient tutorial is definitely going to come out this week. Like, once this yarn is dry and I can show the finished result, I'm definitely going to finish editing the video and post it for you guys. Um, but I hope this little, like, side quest experiment video was fun for you. I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope everybody learned something. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep learning more about the world of yarn and the world of wool, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Wool to Gold podcast.